Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel and today we'll be talking about the M1 MacBook Air. Now the M1 MacBook Air, I've always said that if any sort of technology is going to fail me, it's definitely not going to be the M1 MacBook Air and that's kind of been true all throughout. No, my technology hasn't all failed me at once, but the M1 MacBook Air has rarely ever actually given me problems. In fact, I'll go as far as to say that the iPhone has given me a lot of problems, even though that's sort of, you know, always considered to be a very stable platform to do anything on, but um, not always. Basically in this video, we're just gonna be covering some things that I actually find very good about the M1 MacBook Air and just some things that you might wanna consider if you wanna get one for yourself. So let's begin with probably like the first key point, portability. This thing is very light. It's great for me as a student that I can actually just, you know, obviously put it in my bag and then go and study and then it just doesn't add up too much weight. Again, this is all due because of the small and compact design, which again is very good. It's considering how powerful the machine is to its relative size, it's actually an amazing feat. Now, one thing I really want to highlight, however, is that the speakers are pretty decent. They're not the best. However, I'll show you some uh, samples of what the speakers sound like compared to other devices, but they're not something to laugh at. In fact, I'll say the M1 MacBook Air has like better speakers than a lot of Windows laptops, like probably like 98% of them. So yeah, the speakers are not gonna let you down. They might not be the best, but they're certainly better than what the competition has to offer. Something that you also should keep in mind is that there is very little keyboard flex, which means like if you press on the keyboard itself, it won't like wobble. A lot of laptops do that and that's just like with the build quality, it can actually be very poor and it doesn't really tend to heat up, or at least with me again. Remember that a lot of these things will be very variable dependent. So if you're doing a lot of video editing on the M1 MacBook Air, for example, it will heat up because it doesn't have any fans and we'll come back to this, but just do keep in mind that because of like usage patterns, they, the computer might actually heat up in some instances, but it just depends on like every user. For me, it hasn't really heated up as much before. So that's a great thing for me, obviously. Uh, I just, um, just make sure that the bottom of the laptop does have enough airflow, which means literally just put it on a table. Don't really use it on your bed. Like it just restricts all the airflow that the machine can get and then it begins to build up a lot of heat. The key travel on the keyboard is also fantastic. I've had no problems with it. And the sound of the keyboard, which you'll hear now. is actually very quiet and it's actually oddly satisfying. You know, when you get in the flow, when you're studying and you're just typing those essays, it just feels and sounds fantastic. So I, it's a really hard thing to explain. I will say that I absolutely enjoy typing on the MacBook Air. Just while we're talking of some of the physical features of the device, I'm just gonna say it out there. The trackpad is the absolute best of like anything out there. This thing just wherever you touch, that's where it registers the touch. It's amazing. It's really accurate and just good and reliable. So yeah. Now let me share some details about this laptop. So it has a liquid retina display, which simply means that from a normal viewing distance of the device, you will not be able to distinguish the pixels. Now, obviously if you bring the device closer to you, you will start to see the pixels, but um, um, why are you doing that? Um, like, you're not meant to be doing that. It has a total brightness of 400 nits. It's not very bright, but again, chances are you're gonna be doing anything 
on this computer indoors, so that shouldn't be a problem. The resolution of the display is 2560 by 1600. Again, Apple does have very strange resolutions. It's just how they make their products. It's got a 60 hertz refresh rate, so no fancy 120 hertz, but that's fine. You get used to it. And it's got a marketed battery life of 18 hours. Now on the battery life aspect of this computer, it is amazing. I can easily go an entire week without charging the laptop which I think is absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, it, for me at least, I literally don't have to worry about charging the laptop for like the entire week, even while I'm studying. Now this M1 laptop that I have here has obviously the Sonoma operating system, which is the one that released like a, a day, two days ago, which I, and it's like fantastic. The widgets are amazing. It runs completely smoothly. It's a very well designed operating system. This computer supports Stage Manager, which you might actually remember from a few updates ago. And yes, it works just fine. And you might be wondering, do you actually use that? Yes, on it's actually very useful. I really can't go back without using Stage Manager at this point because I'm studying. I need to have apps like Word Doc and PowerPoint and like the internet browser open at the same time. And instead of like switching between them, just having them like you know, like they'll literally be like on the side of the screen. So like you'll have like the main sort of like app that you're using and on the side, you'll have the tiny thumbnails of each other a program that you have open running in the background and just being able to like click, click, click. That's just a really amazing feature. It's just time efficient. Now some extra details about this product. Can you edit videos? Yes, it can. Actually, it's very possible to edit videos. Now, RAM will probably play a big role here. Do remember that because it doesn't have a fan, once it starts to heat up, it might start to throttle some of that performance. But yes, you should be able to edit videos quite fine on this product. As long as you're not going beyond like 4K 60 FPS, you should be fine on this product. But again, if you are like a fully dedicated video editor, uh, no, do not get this product. It's just, it's capable, but it's not designed to meet those needs specifically. The M1 MacBook Air does run Microsoft products like Word document, PowerPoint, Excel, and all those programs. Do keep in mind that Macs are quite terrible when it comes to Excel. And you'll notice that if you actually need to do a lot of pivot tables. It's horrible. I don't know why, but it's a, it's a nightmare to get to get some functions to work in Excel for Macs, so do keep that in mind. So, is the M1 MacBook Air a powerful device? Yes, this is a powerful machine. In fact, you can say this machine is too good, actually. It's obviously got a long lasting battery life, which I'm pretty sure everyone can appreciate. It makes it very friendly to students and people who work from home or need to be on the go with the job. It means that you don't have to always worry about the battery. And this just makes the M1 MacBook Air a very versatile machine. It's a very adaptable machine to many different needs. Do you just want to use it for reports or studying or work? Yes, it can pretty much do all of those. So I just want to end this video by telling you all that the M1 MacBook Air is a powerful and compact product that is literally designed to make productivity an easier task, which allows you to focus on the work or say your studies at hand to maximize your productivity. It really doesn't matter if you are a student or a nomad or someone who's simply getting into the video editing niche or a pro media consumer. The M1 MacBook Air basically does it all. And the best part of everything Everything about that is that it is always working for you and with you. But anyway guys, thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.